In this lesson, we're going to practice switching in and out of edit mode a little bit more and learn a few key concepts about working between the two modes. So first, let's select our default cube and hit tab to go into edit mode. The first thing that I want to look at is what happens when we delete mesh components. Right now we're in vertex select mode and I can select a vertex and hit delete or the X key on my keyboard. It'll bring up the same menu and then I can choose what exactly I want to delete. This is because in Blender, all of our operations work the same regardless of what selection mode we're in. So with just a single vertex selected, I'll choose to delete vertices. Now, not only is that vertex gone, but so are the surrounding edges and faces. This is because a vertex is the most foundational element in our 3D mesh. An edge is just a connection between two vertices, so without that vertex, that edge can't exist. Similarly, a face is just a filled in space between three or more edges. So without those edges, then that face can't exist either. So deleting a single vertex will also delete everything around it. Now let's take a look at what happens when we delete an edge. If I select both of these vertices and hit delete and edges, then it'll delete the connection between those two vertices. And of course, without that, then the face next to it can't exist. However, that edge on the left still can. This is exactly the same as if I had gone to edge select mode, selected that edge and hit delete and edges. Absolutely no difference. Lastly, let's try deleting a face. I can either select all of the surrounding components or go to face selection mode and select the face directly. Then I'll hit delete and faces. Now, not only did it delete the face, it also deleted the edges and the vertices that weren't connected to anything else. This is intuitively how we want to work most of the time, but remember that I just said that a face is just a filled in space between a few edges. So we can also delete that by itself. For that, we'd want to go to delete and choose only faces. Now the edges and vertices surrounding it still exist. Of course, not only can we delete things in edit mode, we can also add new primitives. Similarly to object mode, we can go to the add menu and add any one of these primitives directly into edit mode. I'll add a plane and then scale it up. Then if I were to hit tab to go into object mode, we can see that the remnants of our cube as well as the plane are still the same object. It's called cube in the outliner, and as we move, rotate, and scale this around, it acts as one whole. So even though these are two disconnected meshes, they're still part of the same object container. I'll hit tab to go back into edit mode here, and let's take a look at what happens when we delete everything. I'll go to select and all, or use the hotkey A, and then hit delete and vertices. Now our object is gone, right? Well, not so fast. All of the mesh components are gone, but the object still exists. I can still go into object mode here, and I can even move it around. With the cube selected in the outliner, I can hit G, and you can see I can change the location, the rotation, and the scale, just like I was able to before. It's just that there are no mesh components inside for me to see what I'm doing. The only thing I can see is this little orange dot, which is called the object origin. The object origin only shows up for objects that are selected, so if I were to select the camera or select the light, then that orange dot's gonna disappear, and it's gonna be impossible to select this now empty mesh object. So I'll select it again using the outliner. The object origin not only tells us where our object is in 3D space, it's also the center for our transformations. To demonstrate this, I'll switch into edit mode, then hit shift A, and I'll add a cube. I'm going to shape this cube roughly like a door. So I'll hit S to scale, X to scale along the X axis, move that in, left click to confirm, and then S to scale, Z to scale it along the Z axis, and left click to confirm. Then I'll hit G, Z to move it along the Z axis and place it roughly on the floor. Now I'll hit tab to go into object mode. And let's say I wanted to animate this so that it swings along its hinges. Well, if I hit R and then Z to rotate it along the Z axis, that's not quite right. What we want is for it to rotate around this edge along the side. In order to do that, we need to place the object origin there. Now, there are a couple different ways that we can transform the object origin. First, we could go to our move tool. And if we move this, of course, we move the object origin, but also the components inside of it. So that's not gonna help us. But with the move tool still active, we can go to the options and the tool properties and turn on transform effect only origins. Now we can move the origin around and the mesh is going to stay put. I could now snap this to the mesh, but snapping is a more complex topic for another video. So first let's look at the other ways to set this to a precise location. I'll go to my options and turn off effect only origins. And instead with our cube still selected, I'll go to object, set origin, and I can choose origin to geometry. 
which will snap it right to the center of the mesh. Or I can go to Object, Set Origin, and choose the center of mass or center of volume, or to the 3D cursor. Right now, the 3D cursor is just at the center of the world, so let's place it right along that left edge where the hinges should be. Remember when we talked about the 3D cursor, I said that we could go to Object and Snap and choose Cursor 2 selected? Well, we can do that same thing in Edit Mode. So I'll hit Tab to go into Edit Mode. I'll choose Vertex Selection and select this bottom left vertex. That's where I want the origin to be. So then I'll go to the Mesh menu, down to Snap, and choose Cursor 2 selected. Perfect, now the cursor's in the right spot, and we just need to move the origin, which we can only do in Object Mode. So I'll switch from Edit Mode to Object Mode, and then go to Object, Set Origin, and Origin to 3D Cursor. Now that that's in the right spot, I can hit R and then Z, and rotate this just like a door should. Next, I'd like to talk about another idea that's really important for organizing and working with objects, which is how to join and separate them. Let's say that I have multiple objects. I'll hit Shift A, and let's add a sphere. I'll move that off to the side. And then let's also add a cylinder. I'll move that off to the right. And now we have these three separate objects. Well, if I wanted them to all be the same object, then I could just select all of them just by shift selecting. I'll choose the cube last so that it's the active object, which is the one that they're going to be joined to. And then I'll go to object and join. Or you can use the hotkey control J. Now all of these can be moved and rotated all at the same time. We just have one object called cube in the outliner. And then if I hit tab to go into edit mode, I can edit all three of them at the same time. If I wanted to separate these back out, then I could just select one of the meshes. And in this case, I don't want to go around and have to select all parts of this. So what I usually just do is select one component on it and then go to select, select linked and choose linked or use the hotkey control L. Then I can go to mesh, separate, and selection. Now it's bumped that out of edit mode, and it's its own object now called cube.001. I'll hit tab to go into object mode. I'll select it. I'll double click in the outliner to call it sphere. And now you can see that it's back to where it was, but it still copied over the object origin and the orientation of the cube. So if I wanted to set that back, then I could go to object, set origin, and origin to geometry. One of the big questions that new users often have is, what things should be one object versus separated out as different objects. My advice is to usually separate out anything that you think of as distinctly different things in your mind. For example, a door is different from its hinges and a cup is separate from the table. So you'd all want those to be separate objects. But on a more practical level, separate out everything that you want to transform separately. For example, let's say that I want the cylinder to be rotated differently from the door. If I hit tab to go into edit mode and select all of it, just by selecting one component and then using Control L or going to Select and Linked. If I were to rotate this in Edit Mode, rotate this off to the side, something like that, and then I go back to Object Mode, if I switch to my local orientation that we looked at before, this orientation is still lined up with the door, and I'm no longer able to move or scale it along the direction that it's rotated in. So since I want to transform this separately, I'd want it to be a separate object. I'll hit Control Z to undo that, and instead I'll select the whole cylinder, go to Mesh, Separate, and Separate Selection. Then I'll go to Object Mode, select it, Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry, and then I can rotate it. Now with my Transform Orientation set to Local, I can easily move it up and down relative to its rotation. And I can do the same thing for the door, regardless of how that's rotated. So for now, if you're just starting out with 3D, keep things separate if you plan to transform and manipulate them differently. So go ahead and practice in edit mode, deleting components, as well as adding more meshes using Shift A, separating out your components to different objects. Try joining them back together and manipulating your object origins. I know it's kind of a lot for one lesson, but by doing that, you'll solidify a good understanding of how to work between object mode and edit mode.